Hey y'all, it's your girl Tiasha back with another video. I know I've been MIA since I dropped the last video, which was my induction, but life has just been crazy. I'm trying to adjust to hey. being a mama of two now. She got four doctor mitts. Before y'all do anything, make sure y'all like, subscribe, comment. You know all that good stuff I ask y'all to do every video. She and let's got get... a supplement. And she just got a doctor Stop. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, and comment. Y'all know all that good stuff I ask y'all to do every She's video. Got my I don't have no doctor's appointment no more. Okay. So today we're going to talk about that good old um, labor and delivery story that I was telling y'all on the last video. If y'all ain't seen my induction video, make sure y'all go back and look at it. Uh, I had got induced. They induced me with Cervidil. So what Cervidil is, it's like a suppository thing on the string and they put it as into you as close as to your cervix as possible and then every hour You're is supposed to hour. I'm telling my story. I'm telling my story too. How you telling your story too? You don't you wasn't even at the hospital. They wouldn't let baby J stay so for the beginning um, I was by myself and then once my niece came and she was able to babysit then my baby daddy was able to come up there. But, yeah, so they inserted the Cervidil. Every hour is supposed to release a certain amount of medication. They take it out after 12 hours. And, you know, it's supposed to soften your cervix and cause you to efface and, you know, all that stuff that they trying to get you to do. So I got my Cervidil at, like, 12 noon. And my doctor was like, bye. And my doctor was like, bye. 12 midnight on October 1st she would take it out and I should be about three to four centimeters so I'm like cool they put it in she puts it as far as closer to the cervix as possible because she told me she did and I'm just laying there eventually my baby daddy get up there and you know everything's going good I get to eat stuff is just going good so like I said that was at noon and then um, time started going by, hours start going by. I start feeling more. I feel, start feeling contractions. I'm like, okay, so I'm handling them. I'm, I'm handling them well. You know, I was proud of myself. I was doing good. But then all of a sudden, around like six or seven. No, I say about six o'clock. They just started kicking my butt. I'm like, what is going on? I was. I asked them. I'm like. Is the contraction supposed to be this strong? And they're like, well, you know, it's, you know, some people handle it better than others or whatever. So I'm like, okay, they come in, they was coming, they were strong for one. And then for two, they was coming quite frequently. I told my sister, like, I don't know if they supposed to be coming this frequent or whatever. But I'm handling them. Then the pain started getting to me and I'm like, um, can I get some pain medicine? Uh, they gave me some pain medicine. It stopped for, it stopped for like an hour. Uh, for an hour, I was able to get some sleep. But I really didn't sleep. So I was able to try and at least get some sleep for like an hour or whatever. And then, um, and then it wore off. Next thing I know, the pain is back. I'm like, oh my goodness, so the anesthesiologist came in there he talked to me he was like um do you want to get an epidural or whatever and I'm like he's like you don't have to get one you know you could just fill out the paperwork just in case so that by the time everything go on if you want one we ain't got to fill out paperwork so I'm like cool because I know with baby J that I took I had Pitocin and that Pitocin was kicking my butt to where I ended up getting the epidural. So I explained to him I really don't want the epidural, but I'ma go ahead and I'm like I'ma go ahead and fill out this paperwork just in case because if you know the pain start getting unbearable, which it it was already kinda to that point. Leave that. If the pain was getting unbearable, then you know, I might have to ask for an epidural. So, I signed the papers or whatever. He leaves. You know, everything's still going good. Then I started feeling sick. And I told the nurse, I was like, I'm I'm feeling sick. So, she come in. No, I didn't tell her I was feeling sick. 
as soon as she came in, I was like, I got to throw up. She tried to hand me a barf bag. This is about, this is at around like seven or eight. She tried to hand me a barf bag and it went everywhere, all, all on the side. I mean, on the floor. And I just could not stop throwing up. But mind you, at this time, I'm not thinking I'm in labor. And I'm not knowing I'm in labor. I'm just thinking maybe I'm having a reaction to possibly something. Or I'm just feeling nauseous because I had ate some Chick-fil-A. And so they clean it up and everything. Everything's getting cleaned up. Um, I'm these... But, by this time, these contractions, there is not no relief at all. I'm just in pain, and I'm like, can I have some more pain medication? I ain't even know, because I've been asking for pain medication the whole time. I ain't even know that they had already gave me some more. But this time, it didn't do nothing. I was just in pain, and uh, my baby daddy's like, they already gave you some. I'm like, well, I ain't feeling it. These contractions is coming back to back. I'm over there getting ready to cry because they hurting so bad. Soon as one come, another one's coming. I'm like, are they supposed to be coming this close together? Are they supposed, like, what's going on? So, after I had throw, threw up or whatever, she's like, we can give you some nausea medicine. So, they gave me some na nausea medicine in my IV or whatever. And, um, that helped me feel a little better. And they're like, you know, give me ice water and all that stuff. So, that helped a little bit. So I'm laying there and I feel like something and I feel like leakage or whatever. Or And I'm like, my water broke. So he goes get the nurse them because they wasn't in there. And she, he's like, she think her water broke. So then they're like, so they check me and they're, they're like, oh, the thing is wet. But I don't think her water broke completely. I think it's like leaking. So the girl is saying that my water is leaking. But the way it was feeling, I'm like, my water didn't broke. Mind you, this is at like 8 or 9 p.m. on September 30th. And all this is going on. And I'm like, can anybody check me? Because is these contractions, are they supposed to be coming this strong? Or like, at this point something got to be going on and they're like they can't check me until midnight until the server deal them being in an hour so i'm like at what point can i get a epidural because these pains is kicking my butt so i'm like at what point can i get an epidural and they're like oh you can't get an epidural till you're at least three to four centimeters i'm like can somebody check me they're like we can't check you till um midnight and then when we take the server deal out and then you can't get an epidural unless the server deal is out so the Basically, I had to wait till midnight. And I'm like, so what? I'm supposed to just take this pain or whatever. So, like I told you, that was at like 8 or 9 or so. So, the pain was getting so bad, I'm just laying there. Like, I don't even know how I sur made it or survived. I do. But, I was just like, this pain is ridiculous. And they was just coming. Boom, 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 boom. I'm like... I can't take this. So I'm laying there, laying there, looking at the clock. Time is going slow. By this time, it's 10 something. It's 10 something. I'm like, two more hours. I can't make it two more hours. I'm like, I can't make it two more hours. So I'm laying there. And I had a contraction. And my body just started to push. Like, it just felt like my body just had to push. And nobody was in there. It was just me and my baby daddy. And he was on the phone. And I told him, I said, go tell the nurses I got to push. And so he runs out there. He's all like, hey, she said she got to push. The nurse is like, I heard her. We coming. So a lot of nurses came in there because by, by this time, I'm not even supposed to be dilated far, let alone talking about I got to push. But my body started pushing on its own and I was letting it do what it do. So my body's pushing or whatever. And they, he's all like, she got, she said she got to push. So the nurse comes in, she sticks her finger in me and she's all like, Oh shoot y'all. Well, I don't remember her exact words cause the pain was so, weird. so she was like, we have a head and they was, she was like, we getting ready to have a baby. Mind you, my doctor ain't even here. It's a whole bunch of nurses. They scrambling around trying to get everything together because nobody really wanted to take me serious when I was saying that this pain was unbearable and stuff. So now I got to have this baby natural because the baby's head is basically almost sticking out. Like she put, she's all like, 
yeah, we, um, we got a head, basically. And so she's like, lay back. And I had my legs up. And she's all like, you got to open your legs. Um, I wasn't expecting to really be in labor. But she's all like, you got to lay back. Uh, you don't want to squish your baby's head. So I lay back. I open my legs or whatever. And she, they was just like, they just let me do, you know, push. And I pushed and his head came out. And he, my baby's daddy was like, his head, his head's right there. Or whatever. They was like, we have a head. And then I pushed again and. And um, his they pulled him out, and then they put him on top of me and all that stuff. And I was, oh, it hurt. I was when his head went before his body came out, and his head came out. I was like, oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do this. I'm like, why y'all got me doing this without an epidural? This hurt so bad. But I couldn't. I mean, the epidural at this point was too late. So I just pushed them out or whatever, and they was like, "Oh, you know, you know how to make have them, you know how to push out them babies and stuff." I'm like, "Shoot!" Because if he sat there, then he just burned me and stuff. So the, my doctor by then they had already called and said that, um, you know, I was in labor and I was pushing and stuff. So my doctor gets there. My my baby was born at 10:36 p.m. on September 30th, which we was thinking he was gonna be a born October 1st or October 2nd because they didn't they didn't think that the server deal was gonna work that fast and it did mind you when I got to the hospital and they checked me before they put the server deal in I was only one centimeter so they didn't think it was gonna work that, that fast and they did they was like we ain't never seen server deal work that fast I'm like yeah and I would have to be the one to uh get it so my doctor finally my doctor finally get there just strolling in and I'm like you told me midnight. She's like, I know, I'm, I know, we didn't, she said, I told you, you was gonna be about two to three centimeters, or, or three to four, I said, I know, and I didn't have a whole baby, so I'm laying there with my eyes open, I mean, with my legs open and stuff, because I had to, uh, even though the baby was out, and they was taking care of the baby, I had to lay there until my doctor got there, so she could deliver the placenta and all that kind of stuff, so she finally gets there, she, um, delivers the placenta, I had, I did tear a little bit, so I had to get two stitches. Oh, that burned so bad. And the crazy thing is, it was the numbing medicine that burned bad. So, she, they, you know, numbed me and then sewed me up or whatever. And then delivered the placenta and all that kind of stuff. And it was just crazy. He, they said when he came out, when he, when when I pushed him out, he had the Cervidale strip was in his head, in his hair. I wish we could have got a picture of that because that's just too funny. Like literally, he the strip came out with him. But um, yeah, that's my labor and delivery story. It's a lot more that went on to it, but I ain't trying to make this video too long. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce y'all to my baby. He was six pounds six ounces, born September third. I mean, not September 3rd, born September 30th at 1036 p.m. And here is my baby Joshua. Here is my little baby Joshua. He's so cute and little. He's asleep right now. See what else But yeah, he, um, I basically had the same baby twice. I'm gonna have to post some pictures or something, but he looks exactly like Baby J. When Baby J was born, he's just a tad bit dark, darker than what Baby J is. But he's my, I, I wish he was woke so that y'all could see what he looked like when he's woke. But this is my handsome baby. And he over here sleeping good. But I'm gonna go ahead and end, it, end the video. Make sure that y'all like comment share, share do it i want to comment at least comment so i could talk back to y'all and i'll see y'all in the next video bye